turn on the lights because the Danbury Westerners are playing tonight. They'll be swinging their bats and they'll be hitting home runs. It's a night of excitement and family fun. Welcome, sports fans, to another edition of Westerners Roundup. Welcome to the 2014 edition of Danbury Westerners Roundup. I'm your host, Bob Broad Jr., and for the next 30 minutes, we're going to have some interesting and great information about the Danbury Westerners. To help us out tonight, I had the general manager of the Danbury Westerners, John Pitzer. John, welcome to Western thank, Roundup. Thank you for having me, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, so, what's, well, it's, it's, we're back for another season. Our 20th season. 20th season. Yeah. Uh, what's the um, what's the main thing that's that's going to be the out the highlight for this year? Well, I think we've done an outstanding job of recruiting this year. We have uh, a lot of blue chip programs. We have um, three players from Mississippi State coming. We have uh, Missouri, two players from Missouri, three from St. John's, Tulane. It's a big. Um, we've got a lot of big programs involved this year, and I think this is the best recruiting recruited team of the last eight years at least now if not ever what goes into re into the recruiting uh, a lot of emails phone calls getting out in front of everything I mean we had most of this team recruited by the end of September last year and Jamie Jamie Sheptick which is who was coming back for his seventh season yep our coach from Keystone is coming back for his seventh season we've also had a lot of help from a, one of our interns last year named Dylan Elber um, went to Keystone to help Jamie, and he was a big part of recruiting this class, no, not a small part at all. Uh, now, Jamie's been doing this for quite some time as far as uh, recruiting for not only for us, but for, Key, you know, like for Keystone and other, yep. but uh, he also has had, uh, he was in the, well, we've had the Western Division last year, right? Yep. And he also, his school at Keystone was, uh, I believe was um, in the, uh, their top 10, they were pretty highly ranked going into the season this year as a D3. They um, didn't perform as well as they had hoped, so right. they've fall off, fallen off a little bit, which is not – typically Jamie does very well at Keystone, very well. Um, what's um, – I know we have one, re one or possibly two returning players, right? Uh, the only player that's returning from last year is Alex Tuccio from Ridgefield. He's, um, he's at uh, Siena this year. That's the only player we have coming back. We're trying to get, um, there's been talk about Brandon Bonilla coming back. Um, he is available. His coaches want him to go somewhere else um, on the West Coast. But he hit 99 miles an hour in his pro day, so there's a good chance he's going to get drafted and not right. go anywhere. But it would be nice to see him back. It would be very nice to see him back. It was really a pleasure to see his dad last year. Yeah, he was, a, uh, Bobby was a lot of the games. and. Um, Bobby Bonilla is a big dude. If you've never seen him, he's yes, I know he's next to him. former Met, and he was a um, he's he's a very nice nice guy. He's uh, he was very delightful to talk to. Yeah, a lot of the uh, pros from like this, you know, our our era. Right. Their sons are college age now. Bucky right. Dent's son was in the league a couple of years ago. Uh, Mariano Rivera's son is pitching. For, uh, goes to Iona. He's a pitcher. He's pitching for. Um, one of the teams in our league, Laconia, this yeah. year. We sure would have liked to have got him. But oh, we never, that would have been. We never had that the opportunity. A, that would have been a, a very good focal point for us, but yeah. you know, we did pretty well. well. We've done pretty well. Um, the Westerners have been busy in the off season as well, you know, with the Chili Fest, yep, and the five K, five K, the hot stove breakfast. Uh, being a, a board member on, as yeah. you are, as yeah. I am. Uh, this is a year-round uh, venture. This yes. isn't a two-month season. This no. is a 12-month season. Yeah, we don't get, you know, we don't get time to relax, really. It starts the day right after the season's over. Well, as we just talked, August is recruiting month yeah. for me. It's not off for us. Right. You know, we, we go right into the season. Um, we have had, you know, over the years, we've had some great players 
come through the Westerners organization. Matter of fact, Mike Holt, he actually played uh, just recently for in a, in a Cubs Yankee game. Yep. And Joe Thatcher pitched last night. night. Yeah, he pitched to one batter. Yeah. Joe Thatcher was a 2001 Westerner with the Diamondbacks. Now he's been in the pros for quite a few years. Michael Old, as yeah. you mentioned, he was 2008. Uh, Billy Burns, he was Billy, doing very well with the A's. Uh, uh, yep. Billy Burns from 2009, I believe, yeah, he was and, with us. Um, and he got he was called up for a while, but then I guess he got sent back down to. He was invited to spring training, but all expectations are that he'll be on that roster by the end of the season. One of the fastest players in the major leagues. Yes, yes, he is. He's very. He's, it's ironically, you know, both Mike Old um, for the Cubs right. and Billy, they both were with us when we didn't make the playoffs. I know. So even when the team's down, the talent level down there, you never know where the, you know, right. what's, what's going to happen to some oh. of these players. You, know, it's, you, you see how many people have come through the organizations for the, through the NACBL. I mean, there's 12 teams in the league, and we've seen the likes of Steven Strasburg. That's right. Come Matt, Matt Joyce. Oh. Um, there's, there's been, we've had just got our 100th major league uh, baseball player in the league just this last week. So in 20 years, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good uh, well, I turnaround a, for. I think a lot of people take this um, franchise and the league for granted, right. uh, but people in baseball know we're one of the top tier leagues. If we're not number three or two or three, you have a Cape Cod league, right. you have the Alaska league, they've right. both been around for a hundred years. Yes. And we're mentioned in the same breath as those leagues um, by the Pro Scouting Bureau. Um, they, they were asked um, which leagues they wanted to cover and we were in the top three. So. I mean, I've seen articles in Baseball America numerous times for the NECBO. It's a fantastic league. The, the pitching, the defense, um, it's, it, it really is a good competitive league. Um, what's, um, what's some of the other uh, items that are going to be going on for well, in the... Uh, our players the... report on June 1st. Right. Um, we're going to have an exhibition game down at uh, Rogers Park against the Housatonic All-Stars, a, a team of local players, on June 4th. It's a Wednesday. Season gets underway. Um, we travel to New Bedford. We open on the road on the 5th against New Bedford. And then our Brechtet boys will have to get back early, early yes, to get up early, early because for, we're uh, having Rick Cerrone at our annual 20th, or our annual celebrity breakfast. breakfast. Yeah, uh, Rick Cerrone was a very big focal point for the Yankees back in the, in the mid-70s to mid-80s. And then, of course, he played for the Red Sox, played for the Mets. And um, he also, career. yeah, he also was one of the players that replaced uh, uh, a very prominent Yankee, number 15, uh, Thurman Munson. That's right. It was, uh, I think he's in, uh, in a lot of hearts and minds because of that. Yeah, so uh, that's June 6th. We play that night against... We open against Keene, the um, defending champions. Yeah. And then that weekend we play against Newport. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen Keene in Newport down at Rogers Park, but if you haven't, you want to treat yourself. Those That's, guys come in, they're to, they always recruit very, very well. And uh, a lot of players, like half of their rosters, will be drafted out of high school. And you'll get 6'5", 6'6", 6'4". These are, made, they look like major league players. Oh, yeah. And, and believe me, Keene and Newport, all, and those are some big teams. Uh, they're prominent teams. Absolutely. Newport, for, uh, Vermont, Keene, uh, always in the hunt. Um, always right there, um, and they are in, our Newport is in our um, division now. We realigned this year, yes. we went away from a east-west to a north-south. Cut down on our bus trips a little bit, but being an outlier in the league, it didn't cut, didn't help us out a whole lot on the bus trips, but uh, we'll take any help we can get. There's some pretty long bus rides. Um, I know June 7th we have the, um, in a, during, the during the morning we have our um, usual uh, thing for the kids. Yep, the free kids, kids clinic. clinic. And then that night, we, June 7th, we have a home game. Against Newport. Port. Then the following week, June 14th, is our 20th anniversary celebration. Yep, and I know we have a committee on that who's planning quite a big gala. Yeah, it's uh, going to start at 3 o'clock and, and 
then we'll have introductions from former players and uh, the uh, cur current mayor and, and so on, and my, many other uh, dignitaries as well. There's a big effort to get some of the past uh, players in here. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's 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 going to be fun to talk to some of them about the early days. I, yeah. I didn't get involved I until was, 2008. No, I was I've only been around about 10 years myself, so I I was wasn't here in '94 when everything actually started. Yeah, so. a lot went on without us, I think. Yeah. and it'll be fun to uh, learn about that. What um, is going to be the um, focal point? Oh, we do have one thing that we're always looking for: host families. Yes, we have, we have five players currently out of 28 who are looking for host families. Um, that's, the be, that's, that's a huge part of our organization as our host family network. And uh, I know I've been hosting players since 2008, and uh, you really get attached to them. And, uh, you know, we still get emails and Christmas cards and uh, text messages because that's how we communicate now. Now, what's uh, exactly a host family need to do? Um, you, uh, if you could have a, a, a spare bed, a spare bedroom in the house, um, we have a, a fine young college man who would love to uh, spend a couple months out of the summer with you. Um, food arrangements are pretty much left up to you and them, um, but the main thing that you have to understand is with a, with a schedule that we play, you just don't see a lot of them on the away games because they get home at 2.30 in the morning, you know, 1 in the morning. If you get up and go to work, you're not going to see that player for a while. So there is a lot of interaction, and you do, you'll be surprised how close you do get to these players. But mm -hmm. um, they're away a lot. Right. It's in yeah. a very aggressive schedule. Yeah, I mean, we play, what, 44 games? 42 games this, this year, year in 60 days. days. That's a lot of travel. And that's not counting the playoffs. Right. It is a lot of travel. We, uh, the furthest we travel is, Vermont, is Montpelier, Vermont. It's about a five-hour trip. They they play and then they get on the bus and they drive back to Danbury. It's a it's it's a lot of the scouts like it. It simulates a minor league experience, right. so they could tell. If, it's not for everyone. No, a lot of players can't perform after riding on a bus for five hours. But you better you know you got to learn how. A lot of scouts come to these games. And all the guys are fresh are from their freshman, sophomore, junior year, right? We do. We do not have seniors uh, in the league because they have to be have eligibility left for the draft. We're supported by Major League Baseball. Every team in the league gets a uh, a cut of the Major League Baseball money, just like Cape Cod League right. does, just like the Alaska League does. Um, they're very happy with us, Major League Baseball. The um, ABCA convention in Dallas this year. We were definitely one of the leagues that they didn't want anything to change. They love what we're doing. And we're also sanctioned by the NCAA. Right. It's, um, it's, just, uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good experience for people to come out and see. High quality amateur baseball, some of the highest quality baseball you're going to see. Every night we have a different function. Yeah, we do. We try to honor a local charity every, at every home game. Um, we have first, you know, celebrity first pitches, um, honorary guests. Um, we try to get a live uh, anthem singer at every game. So we really try to put a lot around um, what we're doing, try to get the different communities to come out and support the organization. We are a nonprofit, so, you know, we go out there and we raise one dollar at a time every time, and it takes several dollars to run that bus all over New England. Yeah, I mean, it takes us. I mean, it takes a, a whole year to raise money just to keep the bus going. Rolling. Yeah. Yes, it does. It's, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's not a it's all a volunteer operation. Total volunteer. The only people getting paid are the coaches, and they don't get paid that much. No, well, not for not for all the uh, experience that they they if, have if given. If we had to pay them by the mile, we couldn't afford them. Mm. Now we have a. A uh, new pitching coach, right? We do have a new pitching coach, uh, Brad Cook from Polk State in, down in Florida in Winter Garden. He, I was just on the phone with him before I came in the building. He's uh, very excited about joining us. Uh, we did lose one of our local coaches, Sean Fesh. He's got a couple of boys he needs to coach, and uh, we sure are going to miss Sean. Um, Sean was a big reason that we get a lot of these big-name schools because we send their players back better than they came here very often. Right. And, uh, so we needed to fill his shoes, and we, we, we went out and we got Brad. And I think Brad's had a lot of success getting kids into the pros. So that's what these kids are out here for. for. They're here to be showcased so they can go on to the next level. That's right. They all, they all come here to get better. I mean, uh, this league has been 
a great focal point for many players. It's been, we've had numerous times when uh, things have always gone, well, sometimes it's gone all right, and then sometimes it hasn't. Uh, we do have a couple of things new to, that's been added to the, to the park, right? Um, this year, we, we, you know, we're trying to make improvements all right. the time. Um, eventually, we're going to try to get a concession stand. Right. And, uh, but right now, we're pretty much going on status quo with what's at Rogers Park, although right. we do have some things in the works to replace the scoreboard next year and make some other capital improvements as we're able to. I mean, now, uh, we have advertising in it that goes on throughout the, throughout the course of the year. We're always we looking for books. sponsorships, uh, yearbook advertisement, the chili cook-off, um, banner sales, sales. anything uh, that we can do to help get people more involved and help the sponsors um, get their money's worth, we're all about. We have budgeted some radio ad. I think we really need to get our name out there a little bit more. We've done a good job branding ourselves. Um, I really like what our our marketing uh, arm is done. Our merchandise is, uh, we got a lot of cool merchandise Dices. coming in this year, trying to make it nice for the kids. Uh, what's our, um, our uh, other uh, goals for this year? Well, to win it all, besides yeah. that. Um, we would really like to go deep in the playoffs and with a roster that we've, um, that we've put together, I think that there's a really good chance we could end up in the championship game again, and then, of course, we want to win it. Um, just a couple of the players, if I could mention sure. real quick. Um, we've recruited a, a local local player from Wolcott, and his name is Manny Cruz. He's, uh, he was drafted in the 16th round by the Reds out of high school, and this, this guy is the real deal. We're pretty solid up the middle all the way around. A local player, a Danbury player, uh, Chris Del Debio, is going to be joining us. He's at Hartford right now, and he's having a fantastic year. We're looking forward to him in center field. Um, being strong up the middle and having a good catcher is a big part of uh, winning games in what's this our, league. What's our pitching staff look like? The pitching staff is loaded. We did lose a player from Middle Tennessee to a torn labrum, but that's the only one we've lost. And we've got a lot of we've got players ready to backfill for any injuries, but our pitching staff's looking good, which is another reason we wanted to go out and make sure we had the right guy to handle that. Yeah, I mean, last year we had some interest, we had some good pitchers, we, like Bobby and uh, we've had our, our Brandon, and we had some other, a lot of the other players that really did a fantastic job, and then we had a few injuries. We had a few injuries. We lost some players to uh, grades. Uh, early on, we lost a player, to, uh, probably our number five hitter to the draft. He went, he never showed up. That's what you get when you draft a lot of juniors. Yeah, I know. They'll happened. lose those to the draft and they'll never show up. So we learn a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a, it's, it, it is a learning experience because you don't know what's going to happen during the season. Any no, you sign these kids and you hope that they come. You try to keep the communication channels open. But uh, it's... Um, you never know what you're going to get until June, so, June, June 1st. So, until they walk through that, that gate and uh, actually... Hopefully no slings, no arms and slings. Or oh, anything no, like that. no. We don't need that. Um, talk a little bit about the uh, golf outing. Well, we're going, we, our golf outing is going to be at uh, Richter again this year. And I know Tommy John, I spoke to him on the phone. He's very excited about coming. He had a, uh, his knee operated on last fall, oh. and he's, he's ready to... He's ready to get back out there. I don't know if anybody, if you guys have ever came to um, one of our golf outings, but Tommy John could tell stories for weeks on end. I'm convinced of it, and great stories. Oh yeah, he's a prominent Yankee. He was very instrumental for many years with them. Yeah, and you give a kid a Tommy John signed ball, and they they really think they got something there. I tell you. It's, plus, uh, plus he nice. was also he also was a manager for the Bluefish for. Many yep. years. He's got some ties to lo local ties. He lives up in ups upstate New York, I think. But he's nice enough to come and join us every year for the golf outing, and we're sure to appreciate that. We also have, uh, I think, is it Jeff Fiegels from, uh, yep. from the Giants? Yep, he's coming back. I've heard some other rumors about big name celebrities coming, but I don't want to jinx it, and I'm not at liberty to say. Right. What. Um Will be one of our well. We have, like I said, we, we always have every night. We have a different, different um, 
you know, something that goes on. Plus, we have every night we always have something for the kids. Yep, yeah, we lot lots of stuff going on in there. The kids can keep the balls, you know, the foul balls. They can get them autographed. There's a lot of interaction between the players and the and the and the youth players that come down, which is pretty cool. You can't really get that kind of interaction at a minor league if you go to New Britain, right? Or if you want to go down to the Bluefish Stadium, you can't get the access no. to these players like no, you, you can. No, like here. I mean, you, you really can't. It's, you know, a, it's very intimate. Is right. The word. Yeah, because I mean, you go to a major league game. You can't get near a player. No, you'd be lucky to get near a player. You but know, here, you can't go in the dugout, but you can no, stand, stand right, right next, next to, to the dugout. dugout or yeah. along along the first base or third base line. Most of the guys are pretty good. They're, they'll sign for almost anybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You said the players come here from all over. When you're a college baseball player, you don't go home during the summer and hang out with your friends. You right. get assigned to go to a league that you may or may not have ever heard of, right. to a city you may or may not have ever heard of, to stay in somebody's spare bedroom that you've never met before. Mm -hmm. And you play a very, very uh, rigorous schedule. You know, some leagues play 70 games. You know, we play 42, right. um, which is a lot of games to play in 60 days. But that's what the life of a college baseball player is. Yeah, I mean, when they get to go to, when they get to minors, it's it's going it's a lot longer schedule and they have if they're lucky enough to get to the minors yes it's a it's a brutal schedule as well a lot of bus rides a lot of hotel rooms yeah so you never know what you expect no it's um it's not for everyone but uh this league helps the scouts identify the ones that they're going to let uh, get through that next gate now we got a couple of double headers that are already pre-scheduled right Yep, we don't typically schedule double headers at the beginning of the season, but the league was nice enough to let us, and I think um, I think it's really going to work out on July 5th, which is Parents Weekend. We're hosting Plymouth, and then we have a, I believe it's July or June June 14th, June 21st, 21st First. against New Bedford. Yep, which is a fantastic That's franchise. Yeah. Um, they're they're probably two or three years old now, but they're really a good, strong franchise ran by a, a really good family. Now we have a now this now last year they changed for as far as um, the commissioners, right? Yes, we have a new commissioner, um, Mario um, Mario T Tiani from Danbury. Yeah, was the league commissioner for quite a few years and. Uh, he stepped down and Sean McGrath took over. Sean's a young guy. He was the general manager in North Adams. And um, he really stepped in. And I think we're taking the league to the next level. A lot of corporate sponsors we're trying to get. And uh, I think Sean's the right guy. I'm very excited about being a part of it, right. the league with him in charge. I think. I mean, we also have a good, uh, um, as far as with North Adams, we've always had, they always had a good. Following well, with yeah, them, I think I think we're two of the older older franchises in the league that have been stable, stable for a long time. Um, now that we had now during the the twentieth anniversary, um, we're probably going to have some interesting things going on throughout the whole season. Then I hope so. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't been involved with that particularly. I know we have a committee set up around it, but. I think they're trying to get a lot of the original players to come back, which would be a lot of fun. I would like to see us have, you know, more, you know, other things happen, you know, throughout the throughout the course of the season. Whatever it would be would be would be interesting to see, you know. Yeah, well, we do have a we have a new, new old mascot, so oh, that's right. We, we're going to have a, uh, a we'll partner have two, for Westie. You will have two Westies. I think we need to have a, um, a name the mascot contest, but that uh, would be interesting. Yeah, two mascots are always better than one. So right. It'll be, it should should be a lot of fun. We can have mascot races. That would be great. Start start one at, at uh, we'll have them both start at second base and see which one can get. The <laughs> I think the kids will really like. Yeah. It, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know. I have to mention a couple of things, um, our, especially my crew, uh, my partner who uh, from uh, Sports Buzz, a fanatic of you, Mr. Scott D. Lewis, um, who uh, our show runs on live every Thursday from 6 to 6.30, and we re-air at Fry's from 1 to 1.30. Our Western Roundup here, which airs right afterwards from six, at 6.30 on Thursday and Fry's at 1.30. 
Mr. Mike Tuohy, who's our director from Expose Cinema, uh, Fridays at 9, Wednesdays at 1. Also helping out in the control room, Mike McFadden. I thank Mike for helping out with all his stuff. And of course, uh, Spotlight On, which is my other show. Tuesdays at 9, Wednesdays at noon. And I need to thank Dave King, who is our theme, who wrote the theme not only for, the, for our Westerner broadcast, but for the, uh, for the Danbury Westerners as well. Yep, that song plays at the park a lot. I know I've heard it a lot. And Dave King will be there Friday, that, that opening night to, to play. Yep, that'll be good. I don't know if we mentioned on the air, uh, no. Mariana Rivera's uh, son is playing yeah. for Laconia. That should be, uh, that should be a draw. Right, and um, it's a, uh, I mean, for, for, it's for the price to, of a of a mission. You can't it's, beat it. You can't beat it. No, it's not uh, what you would. It, it's a tenth of what you would pay to go to a, a major league game. Oh, it's not even. It can't even be that. The kids are free. Uh, I think we asked for a five dollar donation from the adults, but the, even seniors get in free. Military's and free. free. Um, and it, you're not going to find better amateur baseball. Um, not around here. No, I've been to uh, down to a couple of post games this year. And they've been interesting, you know. But, uh, but you know, even even the colleges just, around here were such a, another level above them because right. it's a hand-picked team right. of you know D1 blue chip um, college athletes, and it's better than it's better than D1 college right. ball in this area. That's for sure. And the main thing is, it's all wooden bat. It's all wooden bat. That's what the scouts want to yeah. see. Yeah. Well, we got about a minute left. So I want to thank you, John, for coming in tonight. Well, thank you for having me. And we will be talking more throughout the season with John and hopefully the president of the Westerners. And Maybe we can get, get Jamie to, in here. Yes, yeah, so. Yeah, so we'll get Jamie. And uh, throughout the season, we'll be talking two players. We'll be talking more about what the Westerners itself in depth. And we will be keeping busy with the season as well. So everybody have a good day. We will see you next week.